Aries friends and welcome to your horoscope for November of 2020 where I apologize this month Aries there are no um, real visuals to go with you this month but I have put the dates next to me and don't worry the wheel will be back next month okay Aries this month is so lovely because we get to just take a little bit of a deep breath planets start moving forward mercury is coming out of retrograde mars your ruling planet is coming out of retrograde neptune's coming out of retrograde we've got our fourth eclipse of the month it is a month where i feel like we really get to have the experience of a deep breath and moving some things forward which who hasn't been wanting that for quite some time so we're going to jump in here and talk about all of that but before we get in here the eat and greets are still rolling and going on and the content is just fabulous I feel like we've had amazing guests over here remember if you want to interact with the eat and greets ad free you can come over and join me on patreon and if you don't want to do patreon you can just stay and keep watching them right here for sure this month we have got some lovely guests coming over Matthew we met will be here from the Noel Till line Judith Hill will be here. We'll have Sonal coming over and she'll be talking about Vedic astrology. Simon Vorster, fellow YouTuber, will be here as well. Plus Mecca Woods, Demetrius Bagley. It is a banging month, so make sure you show up for the eat and greets. I can't wait to share these special friends with you, okay? All right, Aries, let's get in here and talk about what's going on in November. So first of all, as we're coming into the month on November 3rd, we've got Mercury going direct again in the energy of Libra. Of course, this is the day of the election in the United States, but everybody's getting some good Mercury and Libra energy, not just the United States. So this is going to light up for you, Aries, the seventh house of conscious chosen one-on-one -on -one relationships. Now, remember Mercury began its retrograde back in October in the energy of Scorpio, and then it needed to come forward but backwards into the energy of Libra. So as it's back and arrived here, you are doing those last minute revisions, second looks, second guesses, cleaning up, re-editing, revising of your relationship. So I will tell you that I feel like until really we get to about the 21st of the month and the sun moves on, Mercury's had time to get a little bit more into the feel of its orbit, in your relationships they may be a little bit tender at the beginning of this month and that's okay. Mercury's retrograde, he or come, yeah, Mercury's direct and so he's coming to a space where you can actually I think see eye to eye a little bit more in the relationship stuff that's been going on. You've had that review time. Now, as he comes direct, you have this small peaky window while Mercury is starting to warm back up to see things from a different perspective in your relationship. So I think it's actually a very, very good energy. On the 10th, we see that Mercury who's direct now going back into the energy of Scorpio, ready to do some work. So this is gonna light up the eighth house for you. Um, joint resources, intimacy, finances, healing, psychotherapy, psychology, counseling, astrology, anything that lives in the depths of your reproductive organs. That's where the eighth house lives as well in the body. So make sure that you're che checking out and taking care of this particular area. But when I think about Mercury being here, what I am really thinking about is in the depth of things that you were exploring in this last two months in the first place, especially as Mercury already did tour Scorpio in a direct fashion. What have you seen? What did you observe about this area of your life? What caught your attention with your emotions? and your desires and the depth of your relationship where are places that you found where you're like oh maybe I'm being too passive or maybe I'm just being too polite about this there is an area I think that Mercury has allowed you to observe some death depth and also to look at things like do I want to get out of debt do I need to think about acquiring a loan or do a collaboration or something like that that allows my joint resources to come to another place now I am getting this question for you Aries if you are in some kind of joint connection with another person, um, you maybe want to have a conversation with them and make sure that your joint resources or your joint connection, whatever it is you are joined at, is on par. Because what you don't want is you're doing your best and on their side there's something going on. And if there is something going on, you just need to be aware of it, okay? November 12th, we have got the Jupiter-Pluto conjunction. Now, this is number three for the year. We saw one happen in April. They were both direct. We saw it happen in June. They were both retrograde. Now, we're seeing it happen for that third time here on the 12th, and they are both direct again. So, as these two have come together, 
this is that you know determination and expansion just they're met it's like your desires and what you want and what you're trying to move forward is like spun up and you're able to go really really quickly with it but it really more so than anything i think is just a placement of success like you can defeat the odds and have success here so i would ask you in the area of your career back in april in June and now would it happen for you you wanted to make something happen you had to stop and revisit or review it and now it's ready to roll what is this that happened here and what have your actions been because as Basil Farrington taught us at the eat and greet if you haven't really been working this particular area or you haven't really been putting the effort behind it to have this success to have this um, drive or to know your own inner strength in this area you're not going to see the benefits the same way and regardless of what you see remember it's all learning you are built of quite a bit in this area of your chart now the 10th house is the career but not only the career your soul level calling what are you doing have you felt called this year Aries to some kind of political role service role something where we know your reputation different what does that look like for you in your life because as these two come together again it will show you there's definitely been some progress here if you've taken advantage of this energy for sure, but it can definitely be a nice boost for you. On the 14th, we see Mars, your ruling planet, out of retrograde, out of retrograde. <laughs> I'm so excited. I am really so excited because I'm ready for some things to move forward. And it's your ruling planet. So it's like, ooh, motivation. Is that you tingling me down there? And yes, sir and ma'am, it is is Mars is out of retrograde it began back in September it has been two months of relooking at the strategy which has been critical it has been important we needed to relook at our strategy we needed to relook at our actions you needed to relook over your identity figure out where you are in line and what needed a little bit of revision for going forward and the world provided plenty of topics for you to get in there and revise your identity. What do you think about that now? What are you passionate about? What's your desire for yourself and your family and your world? There was plenty to be thinking about and definitely the strategy of how you're going to get yourself out there doing those things. So I feel like during that time, it was like, who do you want to be, Aries? And now that Mars is direct, you get the opportunity to start showing up as the person you discovered that your desires really would like to be at this point. Because sometimes we're built of all this fuss and fire and it's like, yeah, this is who I am. This is who I want to be. And the world around us changes or our hearts change or our minds change. And it's like, well, hold on. These are my new current desires and my strategy. And then now you're able to walk that forward. And motivation is online so I love that for all of us November 15th we've got a new moon happening in the energy of Scorpio so up there in that eighth house place where we saw Mercury come back online so the new moon is when the sun and the moon come together and we plant our seeds of intention at the darkest time of the month so here this is still it's such a desire house the eighth house digs into the depths of our desire it digs into that fire that's down in our loins and says this is why I get up out of bed in the morning so in the eighth house here um one of the things that could be happening is plant your seeds um, of intention here if you'd like collaborations if you'd like to be a part of joint resources if you'd like to you know pray or manifest even for good things for the partnerships that you're in i think that this is a wonderful energy but i also feel like more than anything this new moon especially in scorpio is so good for detoxing detox this area of your life from your house to your relationships to the things that maybe are sitting in your heart what do you need to detox from your space and this moon over the next four weeks will help you do that so that this area can be absolutely lush just absolutely lush vibrant you're connecting with the flow of life your partners are able to connect with the flow of life and those resources are very good this could also be taxes and inheritance as well so oh somebody was working on a project a few months ago maybe even in the summer and your payout is coming now that's very exciting. Please let me know if that's you down below. Okay, on the 21st, we've got a couple things happening. First of all, now Venus is coming into the energy of Scorpio. And this is, I'll tell you, Venus coming into the 8th house. Please, the option to become a bit obsessive 
about a person, place, or thing can definitely be here. And it doesn't mean you go crazy and you get jealous. And yes, those things can happen. But it can also be that Venus begins to just super focus in on the finance or a relationship. And it can be in a way that if you're not paying attention, it gets really deep and really dips dark pretty fast. But at the same time, Venus wants to restore a balance here. So in this place of your depth, of your finances, of your relationship, sex, healing, detox, whatever it is, Venus is actually trying to come here, keep you passionate, keep you excited, but beautify this area for you. So in a romantic way, this could actually be really lovely for something solid and sturdy and stable in your life. I think this is a beautiful placement, depending on your chart, of course, to commit to something, to, to do a long-term commitment. In the eighth house, we're serious. I want to stick. I really want something from this. So I think that that's an absolutely beautiful energy to be working with. Now, on the same day, we've got the sun coming into the energy of Sagittarius. So we light up this ninth house area. And at this point in the year, Aries, there has been review of lay Aries. Okay. And so you've re-looked at some things and on the ninth, you are searching for something beyond your horizons. The sun has got you motivated. It brings light, heat, life, and vitality. So if this is education, if this is learning another language, if this is, okay, I'm really ready. I'm going to step into that city council position. I'm going to investigate how I do that. I'm going to publish. I'm going to market. I'm going to broadcast. I want to expand outside beyond these fingertips and go see What's out there? What do I believe? Spiritually, what do I believe? Maybe I even want to teach, but I want to go beyond the horizon of my fingertips and my vision. And I am here for you for that, Aries. Good luck out there. Let me know what you find, okay? November 29th, we've got Neptune coming direct in the energy of Pisces. Now, as Neptune has been retrograde since June, the world gets very concrete where it's like, oh, I've been dreaming, I've been imagining, I've been fantasizing these things. And then Neptune goes retrograde and it's like, er, harsh, tough reality. It's like running into concrete. You know, I really have had these dreams and I'm trying to make them happen. And I am seeing that maybe, um, maybe the vision that I had around that is not as solid as I was thinking it was, or maybe because this is the 12th house for you, you know, maybe some, some things have come out of hiding for you that it's like, oh, okay, I couldn't quite see that for what it was. And as Neptune comes out of retrograde, you're going to be able to see it for what it is, but you're also going to be able to a dream and to imagine and to create in a way where I think that reality has just felt too solid. We haven't really been able to fully access that space of the spirit because it's been so concrete. So at this time, as Neptune comes out of retrograde here, play. Play in the in-between the worlds. Don't get lost, but play. Sit down, meditate, enjoy your solitude, take a deep breath, get back and reconnect with you. Where's your creativity here? Where's the place that maybe for the last couple months, Aries, you're like, I've been wanting to sing, I've been wanting to dance, but I've also been feeling like I wasn't really able to Aries because my energy's been backwards. So now you get the opportunity to just Aries your best life off. Do it in a way that really fulfills those, those hidden but spiritual pieces of you. So I think that's going to be an absolutely beautiful area. Now, if you did have things come up in June around any health issues, I do think that Neptune coming out of retrograde could stir them up. So please pay attention to that, okay? As we are ending this month, we are ending with our fourth lunar eclipse of the year, and this is going to be in the energy of Gemini, so lighting up this third house space for you. So the lunar eclipse, it's still the full moon for the month, so we're going to end something, acknowledge something, make an adjustment in some way, but this is going to be over the next six months. This in the third house, I think of speech. I think of what is coming out of your mouth. I literally think about the fact that once it's out of your mouth, you can't take it back. You know what I mean? Like you just, you cannot unsay it. People cannot unhear it. So as you're looking in this area, specifically with Gemini, happy and comfortable where he's at, um, what, what's coming out of your mouth? What are you saying? Who and how are you communicating? Is this that you've decided to take this role that's a bit beyond your horizon and now you're having to write or you're getting to write and speak a little bit more? Also in the realm of siblings, this could be um, an energy where there are just adjustments happening for your siblings. And then over this next six months, you get to play a part in, in supporting them or sharing your experience with them of how you, you did something or you got something done. The other thing I do think of is car. Somebody's getting a new car over this next, or a different car. Let me say that, over this next six months, because I just think that this moon here 
because any moon, any eclipse that we have will always come back to the home zone as well. It's a moon energy. It's a lunar energy. So something connected to home. And for some of you, maybe you are getting a new driver in the house or that car. It's just time to replace the car. I just have transportation and gadgets on the agenda over this next six months. And Gemini loves gadgets. Anyways, trust me, I am in a progressed Gemini phase and I've got every gadget on this planet. So this eclipse really creates a shift there. The last thing I'll tell you about that is if you do need to relook over or end contracts, you know, even if you bought a house last year and you're like, I am ready to sell this house, whatever it is, if there's been a big serious contract for you and you need to make an adjustment to that, this is your energy to be able to do that, okay? Lots of writing abilities available for you. Lots of speaking availabilities for you as we end this month. And I can't wait to see what you do with those Aries. All right, my beautiful friends, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. If you haven't watched your um, yearly video, make sure you check that out. And again, if you want to come and join me on Patreon, which will continue to grow over 2021, I look forward to seeing you there, here, and everywhere I get to see you, okay? Bye, Aries.